Hey guys, welcome to a new series on a crime stealer. Um, today I'm going to be talking about raccoon stealer for the, this series. That is the malware that I'm going to be talking about. Um, now the microphone is going to be a little bit different from my other videos. Um, I've had quite a few hardware changes since I last made a video. Uh, it will improve in the next video in this series, so don't worry about that. Um, I've imported a fresh VM from Microsoft's uh, Windows Internet Explorer test VMs uh, where you can have it for 30 days and then rearm and do that sort of business. Uh, quite easy to find, just Google Windows VM IE and you'll find it. Um, and then you just have to license it and then you can remove uh, it from the network connection. A um, couple of things before I um, start, if you are new to analysis or you're seeing this video for the first time, I will crack on with the reverse engineering. Um, I might state in the description down below where the analysis starts, but um, one of the recommendations I will say to a lot of malware analysts that are just starting out, uh, you need to make sure 100% that when you are in a Windows 10 um, virtual machine that you actually disable Windows Defender otherwise it is going to be annoying to do um, so the way to do that is going to local machine policies uh, Microsoft and then Windows Defender and then insert this D word with the value 1 with disable anti spyware as the value name you're gonna need that and then restart your VM and it should start okay and um, sort everything out um, it's just otherwise it will just start removing dodgy files which is ex expected behavior for a VM that's there ie test VM so just you've got to reconfigure I mean there's a load of people that have flare VMs and different flavors so I'm not gonna if you're just starting out and you don't know how to get stuff then you know that's that's a little bit of advice um, so yeah let's go into raccoon stealers advertisement um, of course I'm not going to show that in the um, the forum or whatever form it is that would be unwise of me so I've just basically extracted it out into a uh, notepad and then I've also extracted some of the images inside the advert um, so they have a load of different things that it's a kind of a peculiar thing for me to see malware as a service so a lot of people have heard of ransomware as a service which is really interesting uh, but now it seems that a lot of people are looking for malware as a service the problem with that of, of course is that um, they get to keep the logs that you input but then also operational security mistakes that a less technical uh, malware operator might do um, criminal operator should I say they, they you know uploading panels with zips and not properly doing it you know there's less likelihood of that now that the actual operators and developers of the actual malware will be setting up for you you are highly reliant on them for fixing infrastructure issues and uptime and also the availability and um, the, the the actual product the C++ of course you you um, you're relying on the gate and that working well you've got no control at all when you've got malware as a service they talk about of course um, small stub size and of course the classics it works without dependencies on .NET um, and the output is native x86 so it's easy to encrypt that's a pretty standard thing for crime to to one um, what I'm not going to do in this series is I'm not going to talk heavily about how they do the stealing um, I think that one's pretty obvious why I would not focus on that um, I am going to be focusing on communication and actual just reverse engineering so if you want to you know put some jazz music in I don't know chill chip tune music I don't know what sort of radios on the YouTube anymore but um yeah um, th this series is largely going to be just getting really interesting reverse engineering techniques if you just want to sit there and watch someone else reverse engineer this is sort of the perfect series I'm just going to spend a couple of hours going through it in the debugger and also either free um, of course this video is not for commercial use at all so um, I thought it'd be best to have it available to everyone where everyone knows we're at the same point if you have a decompiler then fantastic but if you're just starting out in reverse engineering then you can use either free and then you can move to either Ghidra or Ida Home or even Ida Pro if you know you, you want to go that far um, so that's the aim but there's the, there's a lot of discussion here about um, how in, how good their control panel is and how you can filter out stuff and look for certain things and then they talk about the back end um, not being built obviously in PHP I think they talk about it being built in Rust if I remember the advert correctly uh, the interesting one here is they talk about you know the bulletproof solution slow fast without slow fast flux uh, and being able to um, you know work out decentralized system when 
you can but they've made a node based system i don't know if the translation hasn't worked uh this this has been translated from russian i believe um the malware is supposedly in an x ussr state according to app.any.run um but the it talks about it, you know, if a cluster fails, and it will bring something up. Essentially, I've seen the providers. I'm not going to talk too much about what their providers they use, uh, but it's pretty clear that they are using um, API sort of functions in some some web hosting providers. That it's pretty clear what they use, um, and it's pretty it's pretty standard. Yeah, you can spin up from different accounts a decentralized system which is essentially just use loads of different accounts from loads of different web hosting providers that allow APIs where you can just instantly spin up a load of different VPSs in different sides and then I guess you can you know if you've got a script running APIs uh, based systems now and hosting providers allow that easily uh, pretty pricey on the end I think they also do a thousand per year if I remember early on but I think they've changed it from 75 weekly 200 monthly which um, you know for some of the crime activity that you find that can be a lot of crime activity uh, is sporadic um, there are a lot of professional crime but there's also a lot of sporadic unprofessional crime uh, the reason why I've chosen this stealer is uh, of course I work on APTs in my day job and uh, there is a crime wing in my work uh, they largely focus on ransomware and they do some really good work on that this is more on what I would call the low end um, stuff like Hawkeye logger stuff like that uh, key logger you know it is of interest to the crime wing in my work but this you know uh, we absolutely could reverse engineer this and it's perfect but um, I always stay clear because um, absolutely the work that we do is fantastic I want to you know allow people to see malware and see what I can do with malware and be interesting and but also um, I can't step too far and I think this is a good good starting point um, Telegram and XMPP have been obviously redacted for obvious reasons what I'm going to go on to now is the images that they show of the panel um so yeah someone's actually done some really good work i think oh who was it from i'll link it in the description i can't believe i've forgotten i think it was cyber arc someone in cyber arc has done some work on this before in raccoon stealer which has been really fantastic they weren't able to recognize the rc4 encryption uh they called it a naive exorb obfuscation or encryption based system which is technically true uh but it is rc4 uh, there's an interesting mechanism that they're using uh, so just a little bit of discussion over the panel uh, you can see that you can export to CSV and you can search with through the logs interesting enough you got the standard sort of statistics and things and you there's a focus on Bitcoin and logs and what you can get out of it that you can see the the links and what they, you can exclude and uh, and when you what you're looking for and really refine the logs that you, you're trying to look for um, and also you know looking for bitcoin um so some you know it's interesting actually that it's got russian 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 english okay strange um but yeah so that's raccoon stealer um again i apologize this is probably this microphone is not as adept as the previous microphones i've been handling right i think i've spoken far too much let's get into it let's get into the sample so um this is the sample that we're going to be looking at um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, I've, I've got process hacker already up, but, um, what I'm actually going to do is first use P studio, pretty classic static analysis vibes, just to get myself on board and understand it and try and see what it is. Uh, of course my, my first idea of samples whenever they're crime based is of, of course going to be packed that isn't always the case with apt um, usually they've deployed it in a different way maybe uh, they also aren't going to deploy it as often as crime so they're not as bothered with detections as much as crime um, but one of the key things here is that if i look into the strings um, it's pretty it's pretty clear from the, the get-go that this is packed um, you're automatically assuming, as I say, because it's crime, but if you look, the strings are randomized to somewhat that have been detected. And if I just go down, you'd be used to seeing some form of strings for functionality. Uh, you've got this as well, which is a key indicator that's really just nonsense. Um, 
if we look around you've got some pretty basic compiler stuff APIs here um, going up there's the compilers a lot of new analysts always look at the strings with the dates and they're like oh it's looking at um, here actually pstudio is graded out which is fantastic it didn't used to do that uh, this is still compiler stuff here um, this stuff in inf qnan um, but the, you know if you're starting analyst a lot of people are like oh that's trying to detect the day of the week and you know it's really specialized and actual fact it's just resonance of or just what the compiler brings out um, pretty standard stuff but what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually first put this probably into we've got 30 resources which is actually not too unheard of when it comes down to crime they usually put a load of different logos is CFF Explorer going to be able to handle this I hope so Ah, uh, that's not that's not good. That's not looking too good. Oof. Might have to use another application for that. I thought that'd be fine. Hmm. Um but it's it's not too unheard of. If we look here, the large portion of it is um icons. And that's too not too unheard of for crime. Um yeah, it looks like CFF Explorer is not finding that too fun to parse. Um but yeah, that's not too unheard of. It's trying to change it up. This unknown I wouldn't be too worried about. I could look at the contents but I can see it's a signature of a string table unless um, and with a string table you can just detect through strings. Um, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah so from this my, my, my first inkling looking at this um, as an analyst is packed. First giveaway is really here for starters but then also the lack of actual strings um is another big one so what i'm actually going to do is i'm actually going to put this pack sample um into uh, either free and i'm just going to load up with the default values i'm sorry if i was really quick there but i'm going to open up with the quick values this is not automatically uh meaning it's packed this just means that the disassembler hasn't done uh hasn't really understood what's going on dependent on the version so earlier versions of Ida and other disassemblers this this could be legitimate it's you know it's just compiler standard vibes um, so yeah nothing too out of the ordinary a lot of analysts also start off and they're like get startup info um, and they'll see this which they won't fully understand and then they'll straight away go into here and think right this is the malware so I'll start here trying to understand and trying to define where the um, the com the compiler's sort of preliminaries before you actually get into the in quotations user code uh, detection can be quite hard for a lot of people usually I go by string detection um, especially with pack samples it can be quite hard um, go into here um, the way I decide is well you've, you've got to have command line first to set and it also is dependent I haven't got exe info PE installed here but I would install that to sort of determine which version I'm looking at um, but I'm just going to because Ida's actually better when it comes down to strings for me I get a better experience uh, still some pretty as as you can see actually Ida hasn't detected the randomness which is pretty understandable it's pretty crazy strings um, so we can see like a really lack big lack of strings which is really really big inherent indicator of its being packed. Um, the next thing is I'd look for virtual alloc and memory allocation. We see we have actually got some really weird ones. This is pretty endemic in uh, crime-based API, uh, crime-based malware. They'll put weird stuff like this, backup event log. Um, will it actually be used? Probably not. I mean it says it is there. What I'm pressing there is X in the keyboard to bring up and what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the API event or API text to bring up the references in the binary. Um, we've also got this export which is pretty standard. If I highlight the calls by clicking on call, um, I can see not really too much information here. IDA's identified both all of the calls. There's no offsets or any craziness, no jumps. Uh, we see the ret there. Um, so the calls the here, it just looks like some not it is legitimate but it's not like anything where I'm like hmm that's where the malware is so it's got to be in what you would call win main or main um, and you could explore these this automatically looking at get environment strings being moved 
um, if we highlight the calls, this is looking to me looking like a preliminary. A lot of people would probably get lost there. I might be wrong. Um, compilers nowadays are pretty crazy, especially modern ones. We're getting the get module file name A here, which is pretty standard for a compiler. Um, I'm taking a hunch that it could be. Hmm, let's have a look here. Is this called more than once? I'll, the, usually the 4000 offset um, push there is usually the one, but I'm going to, you can get lost here especially. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little bit of a cheat possibly. Let's see if I can get away with this. Um, with um, the pro version of IDA, it usually gives you a little better indicator because you're able to see, uh, sometimes it can detect because it's more modern than the 7.0. What is this? 7.0.19, which that's oh, 2019, so not a bad detection time. Um, I I do think it is that offset. I could be wrong. This is the thing. This especially this is the hardest point with pack samples, where sometimes I could be you know completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is looking like yeah, because I can see the strange API events happening here. Um, let's have a look at this call which is yeah this is looking this is looking user coderish uh, but we can see this is sort of crazy weirdness which is sort of not helpful at all that looks like a compiler function um get console title string copy we're seeing a virtual protect here which is really interesting and an lp address so what happens if, woo, got some weirdness going on here. Probably setting different things. Have we got different, yeah, okay. So this sort of makes, this could probably, mm, no, that's not got the right length to be uh, packed content, but this is looking like a preliminary look at, have we got any, get some heap allocs, find a resource X. And then some strangeness read file. Okay, so there's some real weird stuff here. But what I'm going to do is I, you know, you with an analyst sort of point here, you're like, where do I start? Do I start going through? Um, that's really interesting. Yeah, so right at the end there, that's a big key indicator we're in user code as well. You'd see like a jump or a call, and we're seeing it's going into an actual address. I think maybe, will it see it? No, probably not, because it's allocating. What I'm looking at here is that this is being set, and then it's being called, and it's not, it's, it's, a, it's being defined in runtime. So here it's being protected here um i could follow it but it looks like memory function so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is I'm, i can see the virtual protect here and i can see it's being moved these are just nonsense we don't need to worry about these it sounds weird but i think you just get used to it where especially with crime based stuff you're just like this is all nonsense um but you can see the address where it could be a jump or anything but it's you know, it looks like nothing at the moment. If I pre I pressed enter there, and this is currently nothing, which means it happens in runtime. So I did can't really tell you what's going on. Um, and I, if I press X like I did beforehand, we can see all of these do a manipulation of it. So you could look here. We see a global alloc. What else happens? LP address goes into here, and then that goes into here, which is strange. It gets a load of different allocations. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, is that on? So, I mean, I've walked through this really slowly to some degree. We could, and I think I might return to this packer slash crypto, whatever, I don't know yet, um, to analyze it more in depth. But for now, what I want to do is actually just want to get into uh, the raccoon stealer. We can see from the strings we are nowhere near sort of stealer strings. So. I could run it and be super lazy and then be like, oh yeah, no, that's running. That has the stealer. Let's have a look. But I've been quite um, granular and looked into the binary and decided I'm perfectly happy to break point on some functions to see where this goes. 
Um, I could probably work it out by just running it and doing it a dirty way. Absolutely, everyone has their own way of doing things. Perfectly normal. I'm just gonna do I need to load. Actually, I'm gonna restart this with administrative privileges. Uh, this is the latest build, October 2nd. I'm on the 3rd. <laughs> Almost couldn't read the time there. Um, what I've done is I've just put it on the dark theme. Um, and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to open up bin and I'm going to yeah give it a go. See what it looks like. So I'm going to break point on... Oh, it's 32. Oh, didn't read that correctly, did I? Um, so 32. I should have read that as well. <laughs> classic um it is in here i didn't actually want to show this in the recording but this is fine run it as an administrator um yep and now i'm going to set it as there you get to see me change the theme there we go um i think these long videos actually you know some people hate long videos but i think it can be helpful for a, quite a lot of people to just sit back and enjoy and you know you can skip through this if you can't be bothered to you know, watch the whole thing, which is understandable, and go to key points. Absolutely. Um, one of the big things when you're starting out with that analysis as well is that a load of people right now go, right, it's loaded, let's have a look at it. But actually, annoyingly, <coughs> um, X32 and X64, they will break point in NTDLL. I believe you can actually change this, uh, but if you're in the default behavior, um, it will break point into NTDLL. Um, I think NTDLL and kernel 32 by default will be loaded into a binary whatever happens. I need to have that as admin. Um, so yeah, you need to basically, you can see the module it's being loaded. Could you see module and then that isn't the name of the executable that we want to debug. Um, what's that? Oh, yeah, of course, lots of load. Um, so you just need to press play again, which sounds crazy, but then you you get to the entry point here, which is what you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to just increase. Oh, I forgot this has like aggravatingly individual font sizes. That is annoying. I should have done that at the start. I think I did this in a smoke video as well. There we go. Cool. That might be a little bit easier for people. Um, cool. So we've, we can see the entry point. The module is bin.exe. That's the executable. You are in the right place. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the commands and I'm going to set a BP. I'm going to set a breakpoint and I'm going to set it in virtual alloc, which is a virtual um, allocation command, memory allocation command, um, API, uh, which is pretty common in malware. I'm also going to just set, just in case, because sometimes malware has some pretty crazy stuff. I'm going to break point that and I'm also going to break point. Ooh, I'm going to break point create process. I can't type today. W and I'm going to break point create process A and finally break point win exec because I've been hurt by that before. Could do shell execute A but I don't believe no, it's not imported. So you can also, um, if you want to get to the location you of an API, you can go like that and you can set a breakpoint by pressing F2 here. It's already breakpointed by the fact that it's highlighted in red. Uh, we now want to navigate back to our original where we were um, at the entry point. So what you can press is shift and then asterisk and you'll go back to the entry point, which is lovely. Uh, you could press control or no, not control. You can press F9 or you can just press the play button. I'm just going to press and see what happens. Okay, so we've got some virtual allocation, which is good. Um, I'm now going to just execute. I'm not going to remove the breakpoint. There's sometimes multiple memory allocations in malware where it does it in segments. Um, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. I want to find out about memory allocation. And then I would, whenever you're doing analysis, don't rely on run to use code. That's just a poor idea. I would say execute till return is your best shot um, because ex you're, you're relying on the debugger to understand what's the difference between um, and it's not always clear between um, DLLs and the user code. If you're ever doing shell code especially, that is real strange territory so always for me just by habit um, use um, 
return to, from execution. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, ooh, is it just FA? Oh, it is, lovely. I'm trying to work out my function keys. Cool, so uh, with conformity of uh, that, I know a load of people go through this all the time on YouTube with malware analysis such as Open Analysis Labs and loads of cool people on YouTube. So you don't need, some people don't need me to explain, but I, I love to explain, diff well, simplistic concepts uh, for people that just maybe have, you know, come in for the, the ride. Hopefully you've changed the playlist to another smooth jazz to get my voice uh, a little bit calmer because sometimes I can get excited. Um, so we've got EAX conforms to the sort of uh, assembly protocol specification. Uh, just every time you have a call, EAX will usually have the return value dependent, of course, but in this case it is. So um, dependent on quite a lot of different things, it can be something else, which is like such a get out from me. But I mean, um, unless I want to try and teach every single part of x86, which I 100% can't. Um, all I'm going to say is virtual alloc, which has been, by the looks of it, they've used get proc address because we've got a dynamic um, dynamic uh, address here in the way that it doesn't say call where's an easy we're in shell code for one it or, or in another memory allocation but where's the uh, I'm not going to be able to show decent this this has been produced runtime it's going to be interesting to do later on but let's right click here highlight here left click right click following dump we see some fresh memory and what we can do now is we can actually check that memory ad address in process hacker as well to see the permissions which is really interesting so if we go into the memory and we go 33 uh, we can see it here read write and execute the classic 576 that's a really tasty amount because i'm pretty sure that the advertisement said that their bin was about 500 kilobytes so really cool of them to do that uh, i could press g here is it any interest oh, yeah it's graphed but it's not very interesting um how did we get out of do we have to escape how do we get out of this how do we get out of graph mode oh god no uh fn escape Oh, this is terrifying. Get me out of here. Oh, shift return. Um, okay, that was horrible. But we've got the virtual alloc. This is virtual alloc. It's been set. I can talk about it maybe in more depth. I'm pretty sure most people in this video will probably understand it. We've got virtual alloc. EAX is being moved into here. We see a call and then we see we've got this jump, this dynamic jump. It's not got a set um, static address. Um, and what's really interesting is if you look at this, I'm thinking re resolving the the um, executable jumping into it. Real classic sort of move from Crimeware. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be really lazy and I'm just going to step over this. So I'm going to use F8. Uh, we could go into this and look at the internals, which is absolutely we're able to do but let's see what happens so we've got some craziness it's been filled which is cool uh we can see kern which is probably kernel we can see the rest there 32 dot dll um we see protect or part of protect you get used to seeing this virtual and then get proc address likely uh cool go down for a little bit it's looking pretty shell codey and then we get get to this point you can see an mz header lovely this program cannot be run in dust mode another way that you can find us if we run that resolution or that deobfuscation function that we just did there this 3492aa2 what we can then do is we can likely what i love to do is just search for strings this doesn't always work especially with shell code but in this case it will just search for this and you'll find um, the likely the original which has been f mucked up and then we've got the the shell code here uh, or or the decompressed stuff and it, it makes it a little bit easier we can see the virtual alloc virtual protect um, this is a little bit easier on the eye 
Um, so what I'm actually going to do is one, I'm just going to double confirm it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be manipulated. I think we're going to enter here. Whenever stuff in memory where it's being jumped into, if it's been recently resolved, malware developers uh, are really lazy. They won't go into usually a defined offset like here and then have some junk code because uh, that, that's a little bit tricky. You have to be a little bit more of a senior analyst to try and understand, okay, we don't start from here. We'll start from here because of this offset um, and you know you don't necessarily always see that i've seen it once or twice but a lot of them are really lazy and they'll just start here so if i just follow that into the dis disassembler uh which is here uh we see another jump that goes into push ebp and i'm guessing starts the program and allocates some memory into it so um if i go back by shift and asterisk and then just do a little old step over and see where this takes us. Surprise, surprise, we are at EBO3C. Well, the, the code, we were at 33000, but the instruction codes we can see are the same as these. So they have started from the start, which is here, and then they'll move on. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to dump this out. Um, we could do this multiple ways. We could do it in the debugger. I am going to do this in Process Hacker. I'm just used to it. Oh, I haven't installed HXD. One moment. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I knew I'd forgot something. Um, cool, back to back to this. So what I'm going to actually do, I'm just going to dump out everything. Uh, I'm just going to put it, yeah, let's put it in, I guess, ugh, put it in documents, fine. Let's call this Stealer Extract, and let's put it out there. Uh, extracted Payload. And we can start to get excited about this because if, actually if you go onto strings, uh, you go down, you start to see password stuff, yeah, standard stealer stuff. So it's definitely unpacked it and we can start to see locations of stealer stuff, login data being for one. So it's, I mean, you can confirm it, I already had done it before, but um, cool. So we've extract that out. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to put it into HXD to remove the stuff. I have an extra dot, which is very aggravating. There we go. Cool. So um, what I'm going to do is this is the, the start of this. This gobbledygook is probably the standard sort of trying to set up the um, executable. Not always the case, but just to try it out. Um, this isn't always the case as well. Usually they have an obfuscated payload where they decompress it or, you know, I'm sure it's been unpacked or decrypted or whatever but then they have a further process sometimes especially APTs have like a multiple stage sort of start in decryption after the unpacked and then oh god horrible anyway so this looks like yeah the full executable um, one key indicator of this is if I go right down to the bottom near the trailer and then scroll up saying that <laughs> we start to see this sort of stuff sometimes you see version information as well that that's a very nice key information that you're at the trailer of the executable and of course at the starting point is here and we could try and identify other files that might be in there but i'm not i'm gonna actually just leave it as and i'm going to then copy this and call this rack dot exe um, and so we've successfully unpacked that I'm now just gonna actually close this I'm not even gonna save the database I've not really done too much I've just talked for a very long time when it comes down to that I'm just gonna include that so that's a 64 bit is it not very interesting okay uh, let it do its business um, and see how that works out. Cool, so again it's done this thing. A little bit different this time, but this time we've got strings. See it's different, we've not got a uh, a push with a 4000, we've got multiple things. I just detected guard check and stuff like that which has helped a little bit. What we can do this time, because it's not a pack sample, is we're going to do the standard reverse engineering trash thing. Uh, I don't think it's trash though, I think it's just working far easier than you need to 
try and work this out. So we've got that. Whoa. That is a big graph. Um, that is that is pretty sizable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that they've just got all of their code in main. That is horrendous. But I guess that's that's what they want. Okay. So starting points will be here. We could sub here. Cool. And then is this the start? Yep. Okay. So quite easy to identify once you've got strings. Uh, main. And I'm assuming as well here because I've assumed there there could be some tomfoolery here. But I'm just going to... Ah, oh, I shouldn't have called it that. Oh, that was silly. Um, I'm just, I'm gonna leave that actually. I'm just gonna leave that. Um, I can't confirm that it's main, but I'm not. I'll be here forever on on the the video if I do that. Cool. So um, we've seen some base sixty four strings that have pivoted off. Basically, I've gone into here, seen that there's some weird. Why is there base sixty four strings? Um, I could have gone for more legible stuff, I guess, like the post or the dot .zip, but the base64 just really bounced at me, and I thought, hmm, that's really interesting. So I went from there, really. Um, so what I'm going to do is, what I did, I pressed G, jump to the address in main, which is the starting point of main, which I renamed pressing N, and then renamed that main. So what I'm going to do is, uh, these are likely... Yeah, I'm not going to be worried about that. I see an FS. I think that's to do with a compiler. So this is where it's just experience to some degree. Compiler stuff. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and I've just commented using the semicolon. Uh, that could be memory allocation. Looking a bit memory allocate -y. Uh So I'm going to leave that. Uh, we've got a co-initialize. What's this? This is looking. This is looking tasty. I like the look of this. This is looking like a function that is not the compiler. Um, so I see two hexadecimal stuffs. I'm seeing loops. I'm seeing open mutex and create mutex. This is looking like a good place to start. This is yeah, nice. Okay, so get username is being used here. I'm assuming get buffer. Push it in call it and then put that into EAX. So we're going to call that uh, get username. Press N on the sub, get username. Lovely. Only one reference to it. Interesting. Uh, and then EAX is moved to EDX. Ooh, interesting. Later on, maybe. Um, it's being used to... Ooh, no, we're being rewritten here. Okay. Um, interesting. Key thing here that's pretty easy to identify is it's first checking if some if it's basically this looks like a lot of what malware does, which it identifies whether it, it itself a version of itself is running, and if it is, then I'll exit. Um, and we can see that really by it being really common in malware, but the open where it's like has it, it hasn't assumed anything, so it's not created and then had a failure. It's just opening something which is in ESI, which is the return value here, which I talked about previously. Uh, we can see the call sub. We could go into here. We can, ooh, we'll go into that in a moment. Um, we can see open mutex. It's making a decision. It's clearing it here because it's XOR AL AL, same register, which means that it will be zero. And then if you see AL here, is it's changed the value. So one is the return value there and zero is there. Um, so it's making the decision if it has already got something, give it the return value, and then if it hasn't, create it and then give it a one. And we can have a little bet that this, yeah, this is only called once. We're testing the AL, yeah. If it's a success or a failure, dependent on that, where does that go? That goes into something maybe legitimate. And then the, and what I mean, su success is a, the worst, a, a bad choice. Of this condition, there is the jump if zero, no, yes. So, of course, in this case, there was a one, uh, which is success. So, uh, test AL, is it a zero? No, okay, it goes in here. This is where your logic starts to go a bit weird. Is it a zero? 
which is actually a failure in this point because we're exploring here then we want to be going here where does that lead us whoo that leads us to a co-initialize and that, yeah see that that goes to a return straight away you can identify it because that's the green there if we zoom back uh oh maybe not actually right, let's follow this double click this yeah that is you can see it just doesn't return to that area it's really strange but you can if we hover over it as well we can see it's co-initialized um and then it basically there's no cause and then it returns out of the main so that's that's a key indicator that this is checking if the mutex is available if it is available we're not going to run which is pretty standard in a lot of programs but malware especially is just like if i'm already running why am i running again so with that we've sort of already deciphered a large portion of this functionality we've gone really granularly into this um it's been 40 minutes and i've <laughs> I've just about got into the stealer. Uh, let's review the strings a little bit more before I go right in depth into that. So I'm seeing base64, which I could have a look at um, because everyone went that that could be a quick win. I'm starting to see the cookies and stuff like that, the things that they're targeting as a stealer. Uh, maybe even the libraries this is clearly not them this is this is you know the libraries that they're using there is no way that a malware developer unzip they use cool I mean it's not really that interesting um, let's go from here and just whoop, scroll very slowly so API API compiler 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 stuff starting to get interesting with randomness compiler here we go so we're starting to get to um, either library or user inputted stuff browsers browsers cookies um, web data a little bit of the compiler <laughs> um, the use of unzip call and then back to user data by the looks of it library stuff library stuff user probably you sort of have to assume sometimes um compiler 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 ooh okay let's put it in p studio and see what p studio gives us it might give us a different vibe to it um last time it got more strings than last time if you remember it had that packed content well it's already got a debug which is August not bad yeah that that would probably line up with the sample um, fairly ish fresh a month and a bit um, why am I doing that don't need to look at that we've got an overlay which is fairly interesting which could be um, 432 bytes that could be a misdetection uh, but we've got certainly more yeah, we've certainly got more strings here, so we can see the SMTP posts um, unzip being used. Let's just scroll slowly. Yeah. So we see screenshot stuff, maybe GDIP, or that might be just compiler basics. We see the yeah registry based stuff on uh, emails. Uh, ooh, see a little reference here of them. Um, raccoon stella not using completely good, good great english i'm not using it myself by the sounds of it but uh so a little bit of a, a remnant of the compiler where they maybe didn't notice uh using nord locker so using an encrypted base system to develop which is pretty understandable for someone that's doing crime so uh using likely probably a vm with an encrypted nord locker i can't imagine them being called david maybe they are who knows um but surely they wouldn't have their own name as a standard i don't know maybe they would private 11 which is quite a doesn't look like a great system but yeah so a little reference to the developer uh which is interesting on the json reference uh which i believe uh cyberarc referenced beforehand a little bit different didn't see the nord locker reference um yeah that was pretty interesting uh seen some basic compiler stuff here which is highly uninteresting 
back to normality. So we're seeing browser stuff, compiler stuff. This, this looks to be some sort of regex stuff. We're seeing, seeing like literals. Um, yeah, looking like maybe regex stuff. Uh, I'm doing a real big sweep of the strings, but this is, you sort of get a flavor of the binary and what to expect, which is something that you really, you could just dive into it, but you sort of want to sometimes take hunches because you've looked at something previously. So it's sometimes really important to look really in depth into the strings. Um, what else have we got? Mm, nothing too out of the ordinary, but looks at it. Uh, more browser stuff. Cool, so we've got the reference to the, there was something else that I did identify before in an analysis and I can't see it, which is pretty aggravating, but um, maybe I'll see it in the hex editor, because um, that has annoyed me. Maybe it's, well, we'll see. Um, maybe I needed to use strings. Whoop. Oh, Jesus, I can't type. And then I want to search next, which I think is F3 here. Ooh. Uh, 2020. Yeah, so, oh, July, there we go. So this is the compile date of the actual Monday, July 6th, and then it's got a set version. Um, so it actually compiles probably for them to be able, if it if it gets cracked or something, they can identify who's done what and how it's been cracked. Um, which is pretty standard for the, the malware developer. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a look into this before I end the video. So I'm going to probably end in about an hour. And, you know, if I've gone too slow, say in the comments, I actually think going slow isn't too bad. Enjoy, relax, have a cup of tea, watch me reverse. Um, if I'm going too slow, though, and there's a lot of people that think I'm going too slow, I'm happy to fasten the process. Um, but what we can see here is an exclusive or, which is really enticing. We can see a bunch of hexadecimal, which is two as well. Where's that going? That's been exclusive or with an EA. Yeah, here we go. So what we can see is we'll see like a set uh, allocation point here, var B, which um yeah will be like a set part that it will be i guess that's been set yeah that will be like an area that's been given as an argument probably i'm guessing actually that probably might be here so uh yeah go into eax and then is that later referenced no uh we've got an ebx there's a couple of pushes which could be the memory address and then or or the so we've got the base pointer then where it is and then the uh, counter which is here so that's being incremented you can see that as well because there's a comparison um, if jump if not below if it is then we'll we'll keep with the loop if it if jump below then uh, if not or jump not below sorry then we're finished and we can then go on with the rest of our time but we can see yeah the the increment that is definitely a counter um and the big point here is the exclusive or because you've got the base and you know this is assembly 80 x86 but uh sort of like standard basics when you're sort of learning how to identify what's going on but um you know it's you could say it's through the loop it's going through one by one on something uh, there's different constructs in different programming languages, you know, lists, indexes, or, or arrays, um, but essentially just going one by one in a value. Um, and then, so we've got that, and then we've got a plus one, which is really weirding me out. Um, move one into CL. So one is CL then later? No. So that's that's been exclusive or with one. So is that two values? We've got var b and then where's var, var seven? That used where is that used? <laughs> it's got to be used somewhere. Is it in here? It might be in there later on. Use. We'll have a dynamic look at this. So we're getting rid of this. We we've got bin here. 
what I usually do is we can see main here. I don't know what's going on here. I could search for these and disable ASLR. A lot of people do that where they de disable ASLR for the, and that actually can be quite helpful for analysis. I actually, I'm unbothered by it. Usually I can navigate my way around it, but um, you can Google, you know, disable and uh, ASLR uh, malware analysis to under identify why you would want to do that. Most malware analysis courses are, talk about that. Um, but I'm actually just going to probably break point on get user MA, which is a bit risky to some degree because um, I don't really know the functionality. I'm guessing compiler stuff, memory stuff, um, but I'm confident to some degree where I'm going to be like, yeah, give it a go. I mean, we can always revert, right? There's there's always that if you've set a snapshot. Oh, what is that about x32 where you have to open it and you can't drag it? That is strange. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. C comments down below if that is something you know why that's weird. Um, so yeah, as before, breakpoint and then, what was it? It was get username A, wasn't it? Don't even know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, breakpoint set. You can watch your breakpoints in here and you can remove them with the Dell or right click and remove. So now we've done that, I'm just going to click play, see what happens. Wonderful. It's got it. I'm then going to, I'm actually going to remove that now. I actually don't want to know about that um, too much. And I'm going to, I'm going to execute to a return. And of course, I'm in the Windows IE VM, so IE user is going to be the uh, the the right return value. Um, we could label this, so not a lot of people label in debuggers, but you can do, do this through Alt and then semicolon. Um, and then I like to synchronize sometimes um, through IDA and debug uh, a debugger. This is how I work. I use uh, dynamic analysis in tandem with the x32 so, um, with IDA. Some people like to debug in IDA, uh, some people like WinDBG which is fair enough. Uh, this is just how I work, this is how I do it. Um, there's no easy or right way, um, but I'm sure some people could say actually. Um, but yeah, so we are now in here, we're in here now, so we're about to be set in here. So. What we can do in the next few videos is we can actually probably try and identify. Ooh, has that identified that as a Win32? Is that correct? Is that a thing? I'm unsure. That's been exclusive odd. That's a bit. Are you sure? Where's that? I just don't think that's. Um... I think they've got that sort of wrong. See, that is... Ooh. Okay. Maybe that's a resolution of an API. Okay. Or, no. What is going on here? Am I going a bit weird? We'll find out. We'll find out. Every day is a school day, so we're getting a what, what is no? We'll find out. So we're going, getting a value here, moving it into a certain destination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put follow and dump, and we're going to go into that address, and we're going to make this a little bit easier to look at. So we've got zero zero two at the moment in there. Um, okay, that has changed up. Cool. And then we've got also EB minus seven also. I'm actually really interested to see the, the values here, to be honest, what their final values are. Cause this is definitely a deobfuscation. Um, so, uh, okay. EAX is going to EDX for some reason. Um, is it? Then later, well, we're going to have to work this out. Okay, so then we've got this arbitrary value that is just a hexadecimal, which is completely fine. Um, what's going on? Okay, don't like the layout here. It's not, there we go. Um, so we're setting that in there, cool. 
then we're moving into CL. So CL is the 16-bit register. We'll see that move in a moment into yep, ECX. And we can see one being put there. And then we're seeing 6BF. This is strange. All right. When, whenever I get confused like this, it's better for me to just go with the flow and just watch it for the first time. So what's actually happening here? What are we actually exclusive oaring? Let's get to the exclusive or because I'm a bit confused. So we've got we've got a value this string in scock and that has likely come from here. Okay, so if I right click there, yeah, in scock, yeah, cool. Okay, so we've got stack strings to some degree. We've got BL, which is being... Oh, that's oh, that might be the, just the null character for it. Yeah, that's just... So whenever you've got a string, you need to have a null character. So we can see the stack string here, and then the null character to tell it that's when the string stops. And I believe the debugger at some point understood that. So, okay, so we've got a value. I don't know what's going on here. I'll be honest, yet. Um, okay, this is this is pretty terrifying. I'll be honest, I've confused myself in some manner. Um, okay, so we're at we're at the exclusive or is that just being entered in? Yeah, okay, it's being put into that location, but is that into there and then that's being used later on? Is that Okay, so we're starting so egu e g u was is that what that was in? Let's have a look. Very confusing at the moment. Intrep what is going on here lads? Well well we're gonna have to see. But we can see it's a loop. Um so let's watch it live de obfuscate itself through the exclusive or function. So we can definitely see that it won't jump because it's not it's not nine yet. We can see EX is not nine yet. Um so let's just carry that on. And we can keep going. D F T R B O J. Some strangeness going on there. So we've got this random. I'm guessing this is the mutex name because that that's looking a bit mutexy, mate. Um, you just sort of it's so close to open mutex, but we'll we'll have a look. So we've deobfuscated through some strangeness here, but I believe, well, part of it is this, and we exclusive order using the value one by using that. So we had the loop. I think everyone can agree on that. And then um, whatever values going here, load into ECX, BL is then, so the final bit there, move that into all types of craziness, but we've got some bits in here as well. So something's happening before Open Mutex. This could potentially be compiler stuff. So what I'm briefly going to do is I'm actually going to look at the calls very quickly. No, do not care. Uh, no, <laughs> don't think so. Um, potential, potential. And um, no, uh, this is kind of an unscientific way of doing malware analysis. I'm actually just going to follow in live analysis because I'm not completely sure. So we've got what we put in there. Calling. We've got some random values being put here. Randomish. We're moving that into EAX now. K. Okay. Then. I use is being used somewhat. Okay. This is a very, very quick analysis of it. Aha. So then it's been concatenated. Oof. 
Something's happened at 843 there. Something has happened in 843. That was pretty wild. Something in there. So that's a that was a concat, and then we had 843 do some absolute wild stuff. So we've got that. That's doing stuff. Okay. Are we gonna return with that as the value? It's looking likely a concatenation of I user. Okay, open mutex, file not found, that's a failure, uh, which is expected. And then we're going to not jump because it wasn't a fail, it was a failure. Um, so our return value was not a likely success. We could search the Windows API, I'm not going to do that though for now. Create mutex 288, return with a one as we've seen. So now if we go into our cheeky little host uh, process uh, mutant we can see we've got the ra well I, I don't want to call it random but the s statically set deobfuscated values concatenated with the user which makes it harder for detection technologies because they can't be like well actually it's this they've actually used a sort of runtime fingerprinted environment where like now you can't be um selling like detection on just this you could you could regex or whatever however what the detection technologies you have in your corporate environment but now it's like and the ie user and this is probably random every build so you've got to be like random characters plus the username of the user it's very granular and makes it a little bit harder um cool so we've got to that we've hit the the hour mark and i have unpacked it and i have got thoroughly confused of what's happening in this bit this bit less so because i just ran through it and didn't in investigate the subs which was a good option because um, we could see a concatenation with the, um, I have a feeling there's more to this, but there's a condition that has, that has changed that. The problem with reverse engineering is you're not going to know everything about the binary. And so sometimes in malware analysis, you have to be like, this happened. And you can, you know, ideally you want to analyze it in different environments to ensure that, you know, it changes because you can't go through every single, ugh, every single subroutine. Um, albeit some disassemblers and slash decompilers do better in detection of compilers and stuff like that. But I mean, th this is this is one of the things where I think it's pretty clear what's going on at this point. We're getting the username, we're deobfuscating somehow, and getting a value statically set between this and EGO, which is I th somehow here. Um, but then we've got uh, the, the deobfuscation routine we've got here. We've got basically the concat. I'm going. I'm. I'm feeling confident enough to say concatenation. Maybe. Maybe a little bit extra. Open the mutex with um, you know the desired access. If it doesn't happen, um, so what I'm going to do is check mutex. That's a pretty standard malware thing to do and I'm super I'm going super granular but you know this is a series where I'm going to be going through um, in detail because it's important to go through loads of stuff in detail so the next bit we know that this is a failure I've looked at that that is definitely a failure so then we'll look at this bit so the next call here we're talking about process tokens convert SRD to string W cool um, so we are looking for the, t the current process for one because the return value then wants to open that process token we want to get that tokens information then we want to convert it security identifier and then we want to do this so lovely what we can do is we can actually google this um, I believe this is local system because I've previously analyzed this that looks like a string based compiler function um, so local system 
Um, so what I'm identifying here, whenever you're seeing token based stuff, it's usually trying to get either more permission so it can either manipulate the process, usually to do with DLL injection or injection of a process, process hollowing, or it's trying to identify what sort of privileges it has, such as local system, system, admin, or just standard user. Um, and so this this is pretty standard of sort of like permission-based um, identification. The, the, every um, process will have a number of tokens. So if you go into um, Process Hacker, you'll identify that actually there's certain things that have been disabled for security reasons. So SE debug privilege, you do not get automatically, but is a real key one that a lot of these want, right? Because this enables you to sort of debug the process, sort of suspend it, create different memory allocations and stuff like that. And then you've got um, the standard sort of who's the user at the moment. So it's me, IE user. I am not local system at the moment. I am S1521, um, which is not, where has he gone? S1518. Um, so you can Google these around from here. This will be randomness and then this will be, ooh, what is that? I should know what that is. The big sad, because I don't remember. Um, I'll have to Google that later. But basically, we can see, really, we, we have a certain permission. Or we, this process has been run with a certain permission, which is IE user. Um, and they're looking to identify, has this been launched through local system or something else? Um, through another, a, a system with less administ uh user escalation sort of sort of like a windows xp and stuff like that whether it's got no such thing as uac or privileges and stuff like that so um i've done a real whistle stop tour of this but i think that you can really it's it's kind of easy to identify it mostly because it's asking for token information and then it's just straight away converting sid to string which is standard then doing this it's referencing something which is local system and then there's like nothing else apart from this this could actually be a string compare to be fair this could be a string compare and then we're either um is es yeah so esi is then being set in the eax so we can see likely ooh, yeah so we've got a fail here because we're clearing and then we'll have a fail here if this is an exclusive. If it's worked, which is here, we we see we get a jump. So this could be a string compare, and that to me, it's it's pretty yeah. There's nothing else adding to here where it's um, asking for more privileges like um, SE debug privilege. Um, so I'm I'm pretty happy to say is ooh, press n is local system um and then i'm gonna say ooh, multiple references is it where is this this is in some other dandiness this is in a thread as well Ooh, multiple threads well 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 that will be looked at later um, because we're going to stick to where we are. Um, so we've got is local system. So what we've done, check the mutex. Are we local system? If we are, then we start to do some nice things where we're creating a new process, which is understandable with the token, I guess. What have we got in here? Yeah, some loops that I have no idea about. We've got some, yeah, so this is probably, let's have a look. Mm, what's that say? Uh, this is, ooh. You know what, really interesting actually. What is that? That, oh, it's got to be exclusive ord. With two. So it's not, that's an interesting one. So the malware and malware developer uh, clearly understands that you can build up scripting based systems and try and you know uh, if it's the same key every time then you can sort of 
use that key and try and identify stack strings which can actually it, it can be quite easy after a while especially because you can get clumps of them um, but trying to identify them completely is quite hard but this yeah it looks it's, it's an intelligent move sort of from the malware developer to do that um, so this is looking probably for an explorer blah, 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 to create a process or, or try and find a process and then this is open process token and then create within there to make it look less uh, more legitimate yeah you know what I'm gonna actually manipulate let's let's teach the manipulation of the system so we've got um, what was that was that the mutex that was the mutex so I'm actually gonna I thought I handled that or did I not oh yeah I just oh yeah okay so I'm actually gonna for check mutex for syncing up that makes it more accessible easy to navigate I know where I am so now I know that I've done that and then jumping or not jumping I'm not jumping because I didn't fail we've looked at this this is is local system so I'm going to put is local system as that and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going it's saying that I shouldn't take the jump from what, oh no I haven't I haven't even done the condition. Right, so it's told me I am going to take the jump, right? And what I'm going to do, just for the purposes, I want to see what process they're targeting. So I'm going to change the conditions. So um, the Z flag in this case is, if I'm correct in saying this, yeah. So we see this, this really small red here. This should then turn gray. There we go. So we've changed the condition. What's essentially happened here is we've done the the is local system we're then testing and the condition jump equal um, and in this case we, we're not local system so it will jump we want to then manipulate and this is the beauty of a debugger we want to manipulate the control flow and actually say actually that condition was a different based um, condition we could actually change the value um, but the Z flag has already been changed from this condition here from the test value it's changed the Z flag um, which is then helped in turn for the JE which is basic a x86 assembly so what we're going to do is we're now going to go into it through F7 or step into um, we can see this is going to be compiler stuff what we're really interested what is going on here they've got GDI plus reference as well here craziness um, what we're going to do is we're going to step through that. What we're really interested into is actually the ex exclusive or um, result to see what process. I think this is a process name. Uh, what they're targeting because they're using create snapshot. Uh, what's it? This create snapshot tool. Blah blah blah. Create tool help thirty two snapshot, which is so so and the process thirty two first and the iteration loops. Um, here where you go up this will come back up here yeah see it will be next process next is it yeah process 32 next where the conditions have failed so it's looking for a certain process which it, do, it doesn't become ex immediately clear if you haven't analyzed the malware before or you haven't analyzed a lot of malware um, but yeah what we're going to do is we just I just want to see the result for the ending part of this video I want to see what what we've got going on here so I've actually done the wrong thing um, so I'm actually going to continue on uh, for the loop. What I wanted to do was actually go through here to the, this point so that I could actually see the address because lots of these addresses are being manipulated. Oh, I've done it again. Right, so we're at the address. EBP and EDX can be manipulated. Of course, it's a simple one with EDX, but it's just good practice to sort of, when you're at that point, make sure. Otherwise, you can, if you're like here and you're like requesting it, it might not have resolved to that address correctly. So let's see what this turns out to be um, I've got fairly good confidence that this is going to turn up here so I'm just going to actually set a breakpoint here let it run and I must yeah it's Explorer isn't it yeah next video we will venture into this business and also the communication side of the um, malware which is going to be really interesting so hopefully you enjoyed this video um, it was a really slow sort of reverse engineering part of you know going into malware really going in depth into you know the starting points of malware analysis hopefully you enjoyed if you didn't give me a a put in the comment and say you know what actually i think you should go a little bit faster um yeah 
So thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next part of Raccoon Stealer Analysis.